is this price correction even more than you anticipated? Where do we go from here? Well, thank you for having me again, Kelly. Great to be back. Um, I think it, in all measurable things, we started essentially here at the beginning of the year. So it is probably a little what we would deem overcooked at this point. But when you had a price move and the velocity that we had before, one could say that we moved to that high end was an overshoot as well. So uh, right now, no doubt uh, that this pullback has been voracious. It's been ugly for a lot of people in the industry, but also on the other side of the equation for the developers and the builders, it's provided you know a definitely breath of fresh air and a, a tremendous opportunity to reset for the second half. Did that push to the highs have the hallmarks of kind of, you know, I, I use the term mean, meme mania, but in other words, when so much of the investment landscape in that moment was concerned about inflation and seeing, you know, these price spikes in all kinds of stocks, I mean, was it fundamentals that drove lumber prices to spike that high? I, I think partially yes and partially no. Fun, fundamentally, uh, we were moving pre-COVID to a, a higher high environment. Uh, and I think what we saw with that disruption in 2020, particularly in the shutdown, when everybody exited their inventory positions, mills shuttered and what have you, uh, uh, really uh, created a, a huge imbalance between what was necessary to feed the demand uh, just for a normal marketplace, yet, let alone one that had this surge of activity with DIY and uh, repair and remodel activity in 2020. Now, uh, with what the builders did in this ramp up in sales, and we caught up, which was that catch up period, why, we, why the, a lot of lumber needed to be purchased uh, over that period of time, and people were paying whatever price they could get, um, that, that has passed. And, you know, we called that, we talked to, to everybody about that and we advised our clients to be patient unless there was an absolute need. Uh, there was not uh, a reason to go out there and participate today. Right. Uh, now that we've, we've seen this, uh, pullback, uh, any projects that are slated here for, uh, here in the Q Q3 or Q4, uh, there's really no better opportunity than look at possibly taking some chips off the table. Well, traders are already speculating about whether we're going to see a housing slowdown here. You know, I've seen different analyst notes on it lately. I look at these stats on lumber where it says that May and June unit sales volume was already substantially lower than in the previous four months. So did high prices act as enough of a break to, to reset the market here? Should we expect to be paying around 715 going forward? Is that still too high? Is it going to spike again? Well, based on what we're seeing in regard to the demand just here for the next 90 to 120 days, one would think that we're going to get a, a bounce uh, uh, sometime very, very soon. Typically in lumber, uh, uh, we follow a very nor uh, uh, dis defined seasonal pattern. And uh, this year, 2021, seems to be following that much more closely. You know, prices went to this extreme high. They need to pull back to the extreme low when, when you go into seasonal weakness. That seasonal weakness uh, um, started when we talked uh, the first time. Now it is ending here over the next uh, two to three weeks. And uh, we should see a, a measured uh, interest in, in buying and refilling inventories uh, for customers and uh, dealers that need to go out there and purchase for it. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.